Hello friends, let's discuss today's set of questions and um, today we're going to discuss around 27 questions. But as is the case with all our sessions, we are going to discuss a few of these questions in great detail. I suggest you write as much as you can. Here's the first question in today's session. Volker Turk has recently been appointed as the next UNHCHR, that is our Human Rights Commissioner basically. Uh, and he's from Austria. He's from Austria. Now, I want you to know that uh, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights is a pretty controversial body in the sense that a lot of countries around the world don't give much weightage to the reports brought out by this organization. And in that sense, um, Turk has not been uh, welcomed in many parts of the world. See, many people, uh, see, he has not um, received a positive reception from human rights organizations and he has not received a positive reception from those countries that engage in human rights abuses. Now, this will seem to be quite uh, a double whammy, but that's the case. Because human rights organizations say that he's not strong enough, he's not, um, you know, he's not someone who's, um, who's going to bring, you know, who's going to come down heavily on countries like China, which often engage in abuse of human rights abuses. Now, coming to the organization, the countries that engage in human rights, they have not welcomed Turk because uh, they believe that Turk is, um, you know, often over goes overboard. Now, this is a serious discrepancy from what, you know, there, there are two kinds of accusations. One that he's not serious, one that he's over serious. The another is that he was over serious. Now, let's see how he performs. And the, the, the proof of the pudding is in eating it, isn't it? Let's see how he does. Now, he's from Austria and he succeeds Michel Bachelet. Michel, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E, -L -E, I'm not going to write today. M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E, -L -E, Michel Bachelet or Bachelet, B-A-C-H-E-L-E-T. She is a former president of Chile, a socialist, you could say left-winger. And um, she was quite castigated. I'm using some words which may sound difficult, but I'll use another word of following that. Following a difficult word, I would use a simple word so that you understand both. Castigated. She was severely castigated, criticized by human rights organizations for going soft on China. Recently, she visited China. You know, I think it, that was her last official tour as the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. She visited China and it is believed that she did not put enough pressure on the Chinese government to stop abuses, especially of democracy activists and the people in Xinjiang province where Muslims, millions of Muslims have been jailed for no fault of theirs. But it is, you know, she's come out and in her last report, she's come out quite, she came down quite heavily on China. She criticized China. She said that most likely, this is a phrasing, most likely China is engaging in you know, um, forced labor. She's in, you know, she said that China is engaging in, uh, you know, incarcerating, imprisoning people who, you know, who are innocents. So as of today, uh, Turk has come in, uh, succeeding Bachelet. Let's see how he works, how he does things. But um, as is the case, you know, things are pretty going pretty bad on the human rights front in China in Europe, large parts of Europe, in um, because there is ongoing abuse of Indians in Britain, uh, uh, ongoing abuse of, uh, you know, blacks in large parts of Europe. Then there is this community of Roma who are the gypsy nomadic community, but they are not welcome in any European country. So when the human rights, the Europeans always teach human rights to us, they don't treat Roma people quite well. Yeah. Now coming down to the countries here, I'll just give the names of the, the capitals of these places because um, nothing beyond um, the capital would be sufficient here, would be needed here. Poland's capital is Warsaw, W-A-R-S-E-W, -E Warsaw. Belarus, Minsk, M-I-N-S-K, Minsk. Austria, Vienna, V-I-E-N-N-A, -N -N Vienna. Then Latvia, Riga, R-I-G-A, Riga. Bulgaria. Bulgaria is in Eastern Europe and Bulgaria's capital is Sofia. S-U-F-I-A. Sofia. Okay. 
नेक्स्ट पद्म विभूषण अवार्ड बी बी लाल ब्रिज बासी बी आर आई जे ब्रिज बासी बी ए एस आई ब्रिज बासी लाल टेक्निकली स्पीकिंग द पर्सन बिलोंगिंग टू यू नो ब्रिज वृंदावन बेसिकली यू नो द विलवर्ड ऑफ दैट होम लैंड बेसिकली या ब्रिज बासी लाल पास्ट अवे रिसेंटली ही वॉज अ फॉर्मर डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ द आर्कियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया एंड ही वॉज द ए एस आई डी जी बिट नाइनटीन सिक्सटी एट एंड सेवेंटी टू सिक्सटी एट एंड सेवेंटी टू आई वॉन्ट यू टू नो समथिंग हियर दैट ही केम आउट विथ डिटेल्ड रिसर्च ही केम आउट विथ डिटेल्ड रिसर्च ऑन टू मेजर थिंग्स वन he said that below the babri masjid there were there was a hindu temple because he found evidence of the hindu column temple columns pillars and all that which had you know the in the, the pratimas the idols the uh, you know of uh, hindu deities and um, second thing he came out with was that he said there is nothing called the aryan migration in fact the ai it's called aryan migration theory never was true he said this was a theory propounded proposed by the british to say that aryans came from outside india and beyond, before that indians didn't know civilization it was aryans who had come from outside india who brought civilization to us and that the aryans uh, subjugated you know suppressed the locals called the dravidians now recent research proves that um, the aryan migration theory is wrong because aryans there were no people technically aryans but they were all natives of india now how do we know this if you would watch certainly if you would read the articles by dr niranjan mishra i think that's his name you know um um he's a scientist genet- geneticist you should read him he would uh, give you a low down on why this entire theory is wrong and he has done ground breaking research it's not something that you know he's a historian he is a geneticist and um, someone who's who understands the science of genetics he has done intense research lasting a few years in fact at more than a decade on decoding the dna of the people who lived in those times so and he has um, you know he's um, matched the dna of the people living in central asia people living in persia today's iran and he has come to this conclusion and not just him this has been this study has been vetted v e t t e d proved has been checked by researchers from harvard university stanford from massachusetts from london yeah from oxford university so a lot of people lot of people around the world have checked this theory and the research by him shows the natives the aryans and the dravidians were all natives of india yeah so let's hope he you know he, earlier he worked for center for finger dna fingerprinting and diagnostics you all think he also worked for ccmb which is a center for cellular and molecular biology um, in hyderabad so let's hope um, you know um, his research reaches wider audience and everything is proved beyond doubt uh, now um, i'm not getting to this um, choices here let's go past this which country has recently passed a law allowing itself to carry out a preventive nuclear strike including in the face of conventional attacks conventional attacks don't call for don't you know they're non nuclear in you know origin non nuclear in uh, practice so you know air force that is artillery you know uh, bombing air air bombing and all that would be conventional attacks uh, conventional attack uh, but unfortunately north korea says if any country would dare attack us we reserve a right to use nuclear weapons that's a dangerous thing you see this here the missiles of north korea at the bottom the range you see this last one the kn908 has a range of um, you know 11500 kilometers my friends which would mean that it can reach almost the entire united states see this this is the range h here yeah? this is you know except for florida it can reach all parts of you know the, you know united states all i mean this is a major danger 
yeah so this is north korea here this is north korea and uh, the south one is southern korea that is south korea sorry people say north korea is located north of south korea which is true isn't it this is alaska and this is hawaii united states is made of you know uh, 48 contiguous state continuous states then alaska and hawaii now you may wonder are yaar, the whole of alaska is almost as big as the 48 states of america remember at the poles the earth becomes smaller the earth becomes smaller it, it becomes an oblate spheroid which means that the places at the top are smaller but when you flatten you know when you take the top and you open it and flatten it it becomes wider so remember in most maps flat maps that you find mercator maps they are called mercator maps show alaska canada um, greenland to be much much larger than they are in fact you would find the greenland is shown to be much larger than the republic of india we are you know larger than greenland by 50 percent greenland's area is 21 lakh square kilometers ours is 32 lakh square kilometers okay so we are larger but in the mercator flat earth map you'll find that greenland is almost four times india's size okay so don't go by that it's a flat earth map it's called a mercator map now i want you to know one more thing north korea historically has been a communist country since 1945 it has been a communist country in 1945 you know it came under soviet influence and from 45 that is the end of the second world war from 45 till date it's been a communist country a single party dictatorship a single party totalitarian state North Korea's capital is Pyongyang, P-Y-O-N-G-Y-A-N-G, <clears throat> Pyongyang. And the leader of North Korea, there is no president, he calls himself leader uh, because he says, my father who is dead is the president for life. So the president for life is a dead guy, is a dead guy. But <clears throat> this guy's name is Kim Jong-un, you will be familiar with the name. Kim Jong, J-O-N-G hyphen U-N. Kim Jong Un is the leader of North Korea. See, in China, in China there is a Communist Party of, you know, uh, China. It's called CPC, but generally written as CCP, Communist Party of China. In North Korea there is a Workers Party. Workers Party that is the ruling party. In any case. Um, North Korea is under heavy sanctions. It's been a for, uh, under sanctions since 2006 since 2006 ever since it carried out the first nuclear test its first nuclear test uh, that was much earlier than that but yeah anyway um, 2006 Chalo, um, I think the, you know the rest of the countries rest of the choices here there are sanctions against um, Iran as well and that is because Iran has not come clear on its pursuit of nuclear weapons the Western countries and the European Union have accused uh, Iran of pursuing uh, a nuclear weapons program in a secret way. Whereas Iran says, no, no, we have nothing to hide. You want to come and check our nuclear plants, you're most welcome. But of course, when the inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency come to Iran, um, the Iranians, um, you know, they act cranky. They often close certain nuclear reactors, nuclear plants, where it is believed they are carrying out bomb building activity. Okay, so I want you to know uh, what has years of sanctions done to North Korea. North Korea is a communist country, a closed country, single party country, no freedoms are given to people. North Korea is about 1.25 lakh square kilometers. It's pretty small, much smaller than Gujarat. You know, see, this is North Korea. This is Japan. How, you know, this is South Korea and this is North Korea. There is no electricity in North Korea. See this point here. This is a capital Pyongyang. It's the only place that's lit here. See this entire place at night is entire country except the capital Pyongyang 
every other place is shut off yeah you look at this particular place this is south korea and this area you see here that's seoul s-e-o-u-l the capital of south korea seoul the e is silent yeah so it's north korea is suffering a great deal my friends this is beijing India's President Draupadi Murmu has recently launched the Pradhan Mantri Tuberculosis Mukta Bharat Abhiyan to eliminate tuberculosis from the country by 2025. Now, if we are successful in eliminating TB by 2025, it would mean that we would have done this five years ahead of the Sustainable Development Goal of 2030. Sustainable Development Goal 2030 he says that there shall not be TB in the world, but we plan to achieve the, that, you know, five years in advance. Now, you need to understand something here that tuberculosis is an infectious disease. It's this infectious disease is caused by a bacterium, mycobacterium tuberculosis. That's the name, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Second thing I want you to know is that uh, TB was in the past called consumption, C-O-N-S-U-M-P-T-I-O-N, -O consumption, the P is silent. Consumption meant that there was no cure and it would eat people from within. That is, they would lose weight and that is why it would be eating within. That's what it means, consumption. So this is how people died in the past. Lot of cough lack of treatment and people would die because of weight loss dehydration you know associated problems like fever rashes and all that stuff now um, while TB is said to infect lungs it can infect any other part of the body please know that fair you know India has the world's highest TB population 27% of the world's TB patients are in India one in four global patients is in India. The second is China with 9% of the global cases. Indonesia comes in the third place with 7%. But if you take China and Indonesia's numbers put together, they won't come anywhere close to what the number of TB patients in India. So we have the world's largest TB population, TB infected population. I want you to write one more thing that the government along with launching this particular abhyan has also launched Nikshay Nikshay N-I hyphen K-S-H-A-Y Nikshay Mitra Nikshay Mitra Nikshay Mitra scheme it's a project actually to support those I'll, if you want to write to support those who are undergoing treatment for TB, who are undergoing treatment for TB, who are undergoing treatment for TB, okay, yeah, then, so, 27% of the world's TB population is in India, remember this, Identify the third stealth guided missile frigate that was recently launched under Project 17A and built by Majgaon Dock Builders for the Indian Navy, Taragiri. You could write this Project 17, Project 17 dash to build to build stealth guided missile frigate, stealth guided missile frigate dash project cost rupees 25,000 crore project cost rupees 25,000 crore dash four ships four ships so the idea is to build four ships at a total cost of 25,000 rupees okay next first ship First ship called INS Nilgiri. INS Nilgiri. Two INS Udaygiri. 
look at choice 4 sorry 5 Udaygiri next INS Taragiri INS Taragiri next fourth one is yet to be announced you could write it yet to be announced yet to be announced so we are going to put surface to surface missile system on this frigate we are going to put um, anti-ship cruise missiles so plenty of stuff will be put on these things yeah these ships which country also one of the 14 commonwealth members to have one of the 14 commonwealth members to have the British monarch, to have the British monarch as head of the state, has recently announced that it would hold a referendum on becoming a republic within the next three years. Antigua and Barbuda. This is Antigua. Antigua, Barbuda. How big are these places? If you want to write, just to give you an idea, right? Antigua and Barbuda. It's one country, two separate islands with a small set of, you know, small number of islands. Okay, number two, um, one is, uh, we mentioned that Antigua and Barbuda, um, underline that, right, comprises, comprises two main islands, two main islands, two main islands and several small islands. And several small islands. Next, capital, it's not mentioned here, St. John's, St. John's, J-O-H-N apostrophe S, John's. Next, capital, St. John's, um, freedom from UK, freedom from UK, freedom from UK. 1981 1981 next how big is it about 440 square kilometers my friends 440 square kilometers and a population of 1 lakh the total population is 1 lakh and you know what 97 percent of this 1 lakh population is on the island of Antigua is on the island of Antigua Hmm, I think that's it. Yeah, Prime Minister. Prime Minister Gaston Brown. Gaston G A S T O N. Gaston Brown. B R O W N E. Brown. Gaston Brown. Now, 81, it got independence from Britain, but uh, since then they have been itching to get rid of the Queen, get rid of the British monarch as a head of their own country. See, a lot of countries in the world, 14 to be precise, have the British monarch as the head of their own country. Austria, sorry, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Jamaica, Belize, B-I-L-I-Z, -E, it's in Central America, Belize, you know, you have Papua New Guinea, all these countries, you know, they have the British monarch as the head of their own country. And some of them say that we don't want the British monarch to represent us. We want to have our own head of state. It's a president in this case. Hmm? Let's see how it's, it works out because as of now, things are pretty volatile in the British royal household. And um, what are the capitals of these places? Canada, not Canada, Canada. Canada's capital is Ottawa, O-T-T-A-W-A, -T -T -A -A, Ottawa. Next, Jamaica. This is Jamaica, you can see it here. Jamaica, what's the only one here? Kingston. Kingston, K I N G S T O N, Kingston. Next, Canada, Ottawa, Jamaica, Kingston. Mm, after revising that, those two, Australia, Canberra, C A N B E R A, -R -A. C A N B E R R A, Canberra. Next. Papua New Guinea, Papua New Guinea, it's in East Asia, Papua New Guinea dash, 
पोर्ट मोरासबी पोर्ट पी ओ आर डी पोर्ट मोरासबी एम ओ आर एस बी वाई whom the following persons was recently proclaimed as british the british new monarch the new british monarch after the death of uh, queen elizabeth ii charles the 3rd charles the 3rd i want you to read one story about charles the 1st how charles the 1st was killed by the british by the english parliament check it out the parliament the british parliament killed the king how read the story why read the story yeah former un minister of state for defense and external affairs a notable actor u krishnam raju passed away recently he was associated with telugu films he acted in over 183 films my friends over 183 films majority of which were in telugu and you should know that uh, he was a minister minister of uh, what is it um, uh, home affairs no extra external affairs minister of external affairs um i'm talking at state level minister of state for external affairs and um, he was there at the bjp and sometime later he joined the praja you know um you know what is it called praja rajyam party prp in um, andhra pradesh it was launched by telugu film superstar chiranjeevi but unfortunately while he contested this election on the prp ticket praja rajyam party he could not win he did not win so krishnam raju was associated with telugu films he has won multiple awards film fair awards i think uh, five film fair awards three nandi awards some numbers like that he was nicknamed rebel star rebel star filmmakers jean lu godard passed away recently he was associated with french cinema french cinema uh why don't you write this french cinema uh, i'll give the names of two titles he is ranked among the top 3 directors ever so you could write this um godard made films like breathless b r e A T H L E S S, breathless, and contempt and contempt, C O N T E M P T, contempt. Then you know he, while he was a great director, what you know he. while he was very humble he said that um, you know um, my movies are for everyone though not everyone understood them okay um, you should know that he was ranked the number 3 on the list of all time great directors number 1 orson welles o r s o n w e l l e s orson welles number 2 was alfred hitchcock and the number and number 3 is jean luc godard okay so not much to discuss except that he in he has won practically every award in the world of film including a 2010 honorary oscar 2010 mein he got uh, he received an honorary oscar from the academy committee but he didn't go to accept it yeah. which of the following ma awards 2022 winners and categories these are correctly matched all of them are correctly matched what's mentioned there are drama comedy series best actor for drama and best actress for drama i want you to write something here uh, since for drama is mentioned comedy is not mentioned best actor best actress we will write best actor for drama best actor in a drama dash um no comment best actress in a comedy i am so sorry my friends best actress in a comedy because drama is already mentioned dash jason j a s o n jason sudeskis s u d e i k i s k i s sudeskis dash 
for what? A series called Ted Lasso. Ted, T E D, Ted Lasso. L A S S O, Lasso, Ted Lasso. Next, best actress in a comedy series. Best actress in a comedy series. Dash. Jean Smart or J John Smart. J E A N. J E A N. Smart. S M A R T. Smart. Dash. Film Hacks. H A C K S. Hacks. Okay. Next. Best actors are over. Both male and female. Right. Best director. Best director. Best director. Uh, best for comedy. For comedy. M J. M J. Delani. I repeat. M J. Delani. D E. L A N E Y. Delani. For Ted Lasso. T E D L A S S O. Ted Lasso. Next. Best director in a drama series. Best director in a drama series. I am writing here. Huang. H W A N G. Huang. Huang. Dong. D O N G. Dong. Huk. Huang Dong Huk. For Squid Game. For Squid Game. Squid Game. See, I also wrote this so that I have greater clarity. Hmm? Squid Game. I haven't watched Squid Game. Uh, I switched it off after two episodes. Not my kind of thing, I thought. So I just left it there. Yeah. Now the Emmy Awards are always given for the best in American television programming. For the best in American television programming. Okay. Yeah. By the way, the highest number of wins were made by the White Lotus. The White Lotus. Hmm. The new CEO and country manager for American Express Banking Corporation is Sanjay Khanna. Sanjay Khanna. Now, when you look at Visa, when you look at MasterCard, instantly card companies come to your mind. But American Express card is generally not given to, it's not like ma a mass product, but, um, and it's a mega company. It's a $47 billion company. Last year, its sales were $47 billion. And ladies and gentlemen, that would make for two TCS. Yes, two TCS. That's the sale of this company. And you would also, you should also know that they have an India division also. Sanjay Khanna is the head of American Express in India. Then you could write Kunal Shah. Kunal Shah, founder CEO of, founder CEO of, what is the name of the company? Um, Cred, C R E D, Cred, Cred. Samir Nigam, choice two. F sorry, C E O of Phone Pay, C E O of Phone Pay. Next, Vijay Shekhar Sharma. All of you know this name, and he is a Paytm founder. Paytm founder. Next, Sajit Shivanandan. Right. Sajid Shivanandan, um, business head, business head, G pay, Google pay, business head, Google pay, Google pay, P A Y. Which international institution in its recent reports has, has stated that 50 million people worldwide are stuck in are stuck in modern slavery. Now, how do we define modern slavery? How do we define slavery? See, modern slavery is widespread. It's present in almost all countries of the world, especially so in 
poor countries, uh, as much in poor countries as in rich countries. You look at this data, you will know what I'm talking about. You see this here, uh, 49.6, that is 50 million people, nearly 50 million people are, you know, are, in more, are engaged in modern slavery. Now, you also need to understand something here that, you know, um, this is quite widespread in especially high income and middle class. You see this. Forget the lowest class because here we are looking at upper middle and high income classes and both together have, you know, uh, a number higher than lower income, lower middle income countries. So there is a great deal of poverty everywhere, my friends. I want you to write something here. 50 million per worldwide, worldwide, yeah, right. Of this, of the 50 million, 50 million people stuck in modern slavery, modern slavery, comma, 28 million, 1 million is 10 lakh, so 50 million is 5 crores, 5 crores, so 28 million is 2.8 crore, 28 million are engaged, are forced to engage in, are forced to engage in, engage in, forced to engage in, um, you could say, for um, commercial, commercial and domestic activities, domestic activities, dash, a sort of forced labor or forced labor, forced labor. Next, another 22 million or 2.2 crore, another 2.2 crore or 22 million are trapped in, are trapped, T-R-A-P-P-E-D, trapped in, trapped in, forced marriages, forced marriages, forced marriages, forced marriages. Uh, people see how is forced marriage, slavery, it is slavery, what else is it? Yeah. So you will find that the incidence of poverty is higher in high income and upper middle income countries. See this? Yeah. So at the same time, you know, the population, overall number of people who are stuck in poverty, forced labor and every modern slavery has gone up by 10 million. The number has gone down, gone up by 10 million, my friends. That's one crore. In about five years, modern slavery has increased. Okay, now um, you look at the choices here, I guess so I'll just mention ILO. International Labor Organization, I repeat, International Labor Organization, dash, uh, Geneva, G-E-N-E-V-A, Geneva, and, and, Geneva, and, what is this, um, Geneva, and, uh, Director General is, Director General is Guy Rider, Guy, G-U-Y, Guy, Rider, R-I-D-E-R, Rider, or R-Y-D-E-R, Guy Rider, of UK, of UK. You and UNHCR we discuss now, UNICEF, Secretary General, they call Executive Director, Executive Director or Chief, simply write Chief. Catherine Russell, Catherine Russell, UNESCO, Audrey Azule, Audrey, A-U-D-R-E-Y, Audrey Azule, A-Z-O-U-L-A-Y, Audrey Azule. To earn Which of the following forces recently conducted a 20 day long exercise named Parvat Prahar? The Indian Army did this in Ladakh. 
following some kind of sort of disengagement in you know Ladakh so uh, you want to write anything about this people here yeah Indian Army we know that it's headed by General Manoj Pandey Manoj Pandey P A N D E Manoj Pandey then CRPF is headed by Kuldeep Singh K U L D I E P Kuldeep Singh Kuldeep Singh Indian Air Force is headed by Vice Marshal sorry I'm sorry Air Marshal Air Marshal what's his name Air Chief Marshal Vivek Ram Chaudhary Air Chief Marshal Vivek Ram Chaudhary Border Security Force headed, is headed by Pankaj Kumar Singh Pankaj Kumar Singh Next National Security Guard uh, This is an edit force It's headed by IPS Officer W.A. Ganapati Ganapati at which of the following places has Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently inaugurated the International Dairy Federation World Dairy Summit 2022 in India, uh, rather when say all are India, so Greater Noida, my, you know, Greater Noida, Uttar Pradesh. Now, I wanted to write a couple of things here. Uh, World Milk Day, World Milk Day, World Milk Day. June 1st, June 1st, next, um, India large dash, largest producer of milk, largest producer of milk, overall, overall, when we say overall, it would include goat, buffalo, cow, you know, all sorts of creatures, all sorts of, you know, um, animals here in this case. Now coming to um, breaking this into parts, not just say milk would include goat, would include buffalo, would include cow. So some of these, India is not the largest producer. You could write um, India dash largest producer of goat and buffalo milk, goat and buffalo milk, goat and buffalo milk. Next, India dash second largest producer of cow milk, second largest producer of cow milk in brackets, number one is US, number one is US. Next, India is the largest producer of milk and uh, you could also write, write large leading exporter of leading exporter of leading exporter of um, skimmed milk powder skimmed s k i m m e d skimmed milk powder skimmed milk powder yeah this is the theme for this year dairy for nutrition and livelihood yeah. Next, which of the following forces has recently? I think um, we've come back actually. Sorry, which country has successfully tested its first solar powered unmanned aerial vehicle? The H is silent, so it's vehicle named Kim In Zing 50. Kim In Zing 50 also capable of acting as a satellite the you know the chinese government has come up with this particular solar powered uav which is pretty long very very wide actually and uh, it works on solar power solar power um the choices um, if you want to write vietnam the Prime Minister is a communist country, uh, China, like, like China, it's a single party communist country. Vietnam's um, leader is Guen, N-G-U-Y-E-N, Guen or Gwyn, Gwyn, pronounced Gwyn, Gwyn, that is N-G-U-Y-E-N, Gwyn, Shua, 
X U A N X U A N Fug P H U C One Shu Fug Or you can pronounce it as you can write interchange the last two words. Fook could come before Shuan and some you know if you want to write Shuan first and then Fook, your choice. That's it, Vietnam and um, what about Japan's capital uh, capital uh, leader Fumio Kishida Fumio F U M I O Fumio Kishida K I S H I D A Kishida. Chalo. According to Cantor Brand Z, Brand Z India ranking, which company has emerged as India's most valuable brand in 2022? Tata Consultancy Services is world so India number one, followed by HDFC Bank and Infosys. Number one, TCS. Number two, HDFC Bank. Number three, TCS. Sorry, number three, Infosys. Infosys. So top three in India. You want four and five? Four Airtel. A I R T E L Airtel Five Asian Paints Asian Paints I have a terrible headache so at times my eyes may close do not worry too much about it okay yeah it suddenly come in the course of the talk I don't know it happens I think so we have TCS followed by HJC Bank in the second place and uh, what is that? Uh, Infosys in the third place. Fourth is Airtel, fifth is Asian Paints. Fair? So, these are the <coughs> companies here. The European Parliament recently stated that Hungary can no longer be considered a full democracy. In this context, which is the following statements to relating to Hungary as are true. See, this is Hungary and more or less East Asia, you know, Central East Asia, um, Europe. This is surrounded by Romania. You see the choices. All three, all the things are right here. Austria. This is Austria. Okay. Um, Slovakia. Ukraine. Romania. Now you have Greece here. Yeah. Bosnia. Yeah, Croatia. You have Serbia. You have this is Serbia. This is Croatia. And this is Slovenia. Okay. All are mentioned here. So if you want to the capitals, I can tell you. And just before that, let me tell you something more. Hungary has always been a thorn, or rather Victor Orban has always been a thorn in the side of the, you know, the leftist Europeans. Victor Orban is a rightist, a nationalist, and who he says that I will not allow migrants from Muslim countries into my country. I will not let them settle here. European Union said that all countries will have to pitch in with certain quota and whatever the quota of number of quota of the number of migrants that could be settled in the Hungary will be decided by the European Parliament. This man said nothing doing, it won't happen. You want to take them, you can, you're free to take them in, we will not take them in. Second thing, he is like, he's pro-Russia, he's supported um, Russia in this case and the Europeans, you know that they're not very happy with what Russia is doing in Ukraine. So overall, things are pretty bad there. Now, what are the capitals of these places? It's all mentioned here. No? Hungary's capital is Budapest. It's mentioned in the choices also. Um, Croatia, uh, Austria. Austria is home to Vienna, V-I-E-N-N-A. -N -N -A. This is Vienna, V-I-E-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Vienna, if you want to write, underline this name, pull it down, add it, right? Um, Head office of, head office of International Atomic Energy Agency, International Atomic Energy Agency, International Atomic Energy Agency. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Croatia. This is Zagreb. See, this is Croatia. Zagreb. J. Sorry, Z A G B R A B. Romania, pretty large country here. Capital Bucharest. Is it Bucharest? B U C H A R E S T. Serbia, where Novak Djokovic comes from. Yeah. Uh, the 
Prime Minister is Alexander Vukic. Alexander. Oh no, I think we were just writing the, the capitals, no? Right. Um, Belgrade. B E L G R A D E. Belgrade. Slovenia. It's here. This it is. It's a very tiny country. Yeah. Jub Jana. Let me spell it. L J U B. I repeat. L J U B. L J U B J L L I repeat J L A N A Jibjana Jibjana L J A N A Ukraine It's mentioned there Kiev K Y I V Kiev Kiev So, see this part of Russia, this part of Russia, but in Poland and Lithuania, it's called Kaliningrad. Kaliningrad. Kaliningrad, otherwise. Kaliningrad. Which state has rolled out a midday meal scheme named Chief Minister's Breakfast Scheme for government school students from classes 1 to 5? Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu, Chief Minister is Muttuvel Karnanadi Stalin. MK Stalin has launched this. So usually there is a midday meal scheme. The name suggests midday. That is, kids would have one good meal in the day. Uh, this is one of the fundamental reasons why a lot of people in rural areas come to schools. And this is also the target behind the launch of this scheme. That is, we need to have as many students in our classes as possible to we need to ensure that they don't drop out. They don't drop out. Now, if schools close down these schemes, people will leave them. They will leave them, my friends. Because um, most poor people send their kids to educational institutes primarily because they get a free meal and two, they get access to education, which they as parents them, themselves could not have, you know, access to. So, they know that a lot of people value education pretty high. In fact, I value education pretty high. I believe that it's a, it's it's going to determine a lot of things in your life, you know, the kind of growth you have, the kind of, you know, um, the kind of life you would live. Yeah. So, um, if we have Tamil Nadu there. Muttuvel Karnani is Stalin. That's about it, I guess. Hmm? The Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Geological Park uh, has been adjudged the best geological park in the country. This is in Darjeeling. It's in Darjeeling. This park, uh, Jew rather, was opened in 1958. 1958. Now, this is named after Padmaja Naidu, whose claim to fame is two things. One, she was a freedom fighter and um, she was also the you know, the governor of West Bengal between 1958, 56 and 67. A full 11 years, she was the governor of West Bengal, 1956 to 67. Uh, and you need to know that Padmanda Naidu was also, um, we said two reasons. Now, one is that, you know, um, uh, 56, 57. And um, second is that she is the daughter of uh, the great Sarojini Naidu. She is the daughter of great Sarojini Naidu. Yeah. So Padmaja Naidu, West Bengal governor and of course a freedom fighter plus you know, um, the daughter of Sarojini Naidu. Yeah. National Engineers Day is celebrated on 15th September to commemorate the birth anniversary of Bharat Ratna Moksha Gundam Visveswaraya. He came from his forefathers came from a village called Moksha Gundam in Andhra Pradesh. The name stuck. Moksha Gundam Visveswaraya. Moksha Gundam Visveswaraya is said to be the India's first civil engineers. First civil engineer. And uh, between 1912 and 1918, he was the Diwan of the state of Mysore. Diwan. D I W A N. Diwan. Okay. Who are the choices? What are the choices? By the way, Moshe Gundam Visveswaraya built, built a lot of things. Uh, you have the Badravati steel plant, 
you have this uh, Krishna Rajasagar Dam, the flood system in Hyderabad, all were created by Vishweshwara Yagaru. Yeah? He received the Bharat Ratna in 1955. 1955. The same year, two more persons received the Bharat Ratna. 1955, two more persons, apart from, of course, uh, Vishweshwara Ji. One was Jawaharlal Nehru, the other was Bhagwan Das. Bhagwan Das. Bhagwan Das was his theosophist and uh, he believed that, um, you know, um, rioting, burning buses and all that is not the legitimate, not the right form of protesting. Yeah. Um, what about the choices here? Govind Ballab Pant, you know, he was the first chief minister of Uttar Pradesh, 1950 to 54. He was the first chief minister of Uttar Pradesh. Then he was made the Union Home Minister and, um, you know, he, I mentioned this, that he was the Chief Minister between, Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, the first one, between 1950 and 54, and he received the Bharat Ratna in 1957. Bharat Ratna 1957, first Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh and first, uh, sorry, and Deputy, no, sorry, Home Minister of India between, uh, you know, between 55 and um, 61 till his death okay so what were the choices Purushottam Das Tandon Purushottam Das Tandon this is the Bharatatna in 1961 1961 he was um, you know he was nicknamed UP Gandhi Uttar Pradesh Gandhi Uttar Pradesh Gandhi and he was also nicknamed Rajarshi Raj Arshi Raj Rishi is Raj Arshi. He was considered a very upright person, a kind of saint, royal saint, Raj Arshi. Yeah. Dhondo Keshav Karve was a freedom fighter who fought for the emancipation of widows and for their education as well as for the remarriage. Dhondo Keshav Karve received the Bharat Ratna in 1958. At the age of 100, Dhondo Keshav Karve received the Bharat Ratna, age of 100, the oldest recipient of the Bharat Ratna. That was the year 1958. 1958. In 1958, Dhondo Keshav Karve, Bhagwan Das, 1955, Moksha Gundam Isvaswarya, 1955, Purushottam Das Tandon, 1957, no, Purushottam Das, 561, I'm sorry, 1961. Purushottam Das Tandon, 1961, Govind Ballapanth, 1957, 57, so 57, 61, um, 3 and 4, 54, and 5th uh, one, 1958, 1958. See, in the first two years of the Bharatatna, Three persons each received received it. Like in fifty four, when it started, it was given. It was um, given to three persons: Chandrasekhar Venkataraman, Sarve Pali Radha Krishnan, and um, Chakravarti Radha Gopalachari. The next year, in fifty five, it was given to Vishwasarya Ji, Bhagwan Das Ji, and Jawaharlal Nehru. Roger Federer has announced his retirement from tennis. He is uh, from Switzerland. He was world number one for 310 weeks, 310 weeks, of which for 237 consecutive weeks, he was world number one. 237 consecutive weeks, he was world number one, and that's a record. That's a record. He Received, he has won 20 major Grand Slams. Now, what are Grand Slams? There are four tennis tournaments called the Grand Slams that make the Grand Slam. The Australian Open, the French Open, the Wimbledon and the Australian Open. Sorry, and the US Open. Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon and US Open. Okay. These four are called the Grand Slam events, the highest events in tennis. And you also need to know that he has won 20 of these. 20, you know, including 8 Wimbledon titles. 8 Wimbledon titles, my friends. 
but he also won only one French Open, only one French Open singles tournament, singles title. Okay, and um, he is always had admirers, admirers from you know in all parts of the world. I deeply admire Roger Federer. Very very hardworking, down to a simple man. Extraordinary skill. Which of the following hosted the first Shunya conference, um, Shunya forum to commemorate the first anniversary of India's zero pollution e-mobility campaign? Niti Aayog, not much to discuss here. Greenpeace India, uh, Greenpeace is a London based international environmental organization. Uh, FIKI is the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. If you want to write that, Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Okay, President Sanjeev Mehta. President Sanjeev Mehta. Sanjeev Mehta. Next. NASCOM. National Association. National Association for Software and Service Companies. National Association of Software and service companies, service companies, uh, right, chairperson, Krishnan Ramanujam, Krishnan Ramanujam, it's a chairperson, next, president, Dev Jani Ghosh, Deb Jani Ghosh, D E B J A N I, Deb Jani Ghosh, G H O S H Ghosh. The last one, Center for Science and Environment, was started by, you know, um, Sundar Ji, and she is said to be the person behind this. Entire, you know, they came out with this report about the sugar quantity and pesticides in, especially pesticides in cola drinks, you know, Pepsi Cola, in Coke and all that stuff. Yeah, she came out with that. Pepsi. With which um, bank has the Chennai based billionaire venture incubation signed an MOU to facilitate investment in startups through a special purpose vehicle? DBS Bank, Development Bank of Singapore, Development Bank of Singapore is a Singapore based bank, one of the world's leading banks, it's headed by an Indian named, not an Indian, person of Indian origin, Piyush Gupta, Piyush Gupta is a CEO, Piyush Gupta, IDBI Bank, Rakesh Sharma, Rakesh Sharma, Rakesh Sharma, Naresh Kumar, who stored the Indian tennis scene like a colossus, passed away recently. Okay, this is Ra Naresh Kumar. Okay, now um, he was um, he was a quarter finalist at Wimbledon once, and the doubles he had come to the semi uh, quarter finals semi finals four times. I think. No, he was a quarter finalist at the in the doubles tournament at uh, Wimbledon on four occasions. And uh, coming to the fourth round was his biggest achievement in the Wimbledon in, in the solo, you know, singles tournament. You need to know that he was also the captain of the Indian Davis Cup team, 1989-1993. Between 1989 and 1993, he was the captain of Indian Davis Cup team. He was given the Dronacharya award which is given to the best coaches he was given the Dronacharya award in the year 2000 that time she became the first tennis coach to be given the Bharat, sorry to be given the Dronacharya award first tennis coach to receive the Dronacharya award Naresh Kumar year 2000 year 2000 which of the following launched Doordarshan and YouTube services titled Doorse Namaste, a new television series that promotes healthy behaviors in a post-pandemic world? Okay, uh, UNICEF and US Agency for International Development. I don't get there. 
um, you know doordarshan started in 1959 1959 doordarshan started in 1959 um, color tv came in 1982 yes there was no color between 1959 and 82 okay i think cable tv came in 91 cable tv came in 91 so that's uh, one and second thing you need to understand that um, um, doordarshan is a government of india body it's owned by the government of india yeah i think we discussed all these choices except for the one which is not important from the exam point of perspective which country will host the ninth session of the governing body of the international treaty on plant genetic resources or food and agriculture from 19 september 2022 uh it would be india new delhi yeah new delhi to be precise new delhi will host the governing body of um, international treaty on plant genetic resources of food and agriculture in september in september this year so in fact it started actually you could say that hmm? so this is being organized by the food and agricultural organization you could write this food organized by food and agricultural organization food and agriculture organization next point um theme of or motto theme of theme of international treaty on plant genetic resources international treaty on plant genetic resources plant genetic resources for food and agriculture dash what is the theme celebrating celebrating the guardians of crop diversity celebrating the guardians of crop diversity crop diversity hmm crop diversity okay see this international treaty on plant genetic resources was adopted by the fao way back in 2001 2000 one and every year it's been happening every year it's been happening so this uh, thailand prime minister has been suspended thailand prime minister's thailand's prime minister's name is prayuth chan o cha you could write this thailand pm or suspended pm suspended pm dash prayuth p a r a y u t prayuth chan o cha C H A N hyphen O hyphen C H A Prayuth Chan O Cha. Okay. Prayuth Chan O Cha. He has been suspended by the Thailand Thailand um, Supreme Court. Okay. Spanish Prime Minister is Pedro Sanchez. Pedro P E D R O Pedro. Sanchez, S A N C H E Z, S A N C H E Z. Next. To which nation did Uzbekistan recently hand over the retaining presidency of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, India? India is going to host the 2023 summit of SCO. 2023 SCO summit will be held in India. Okay, now if you want to write SCO, and I will interpret the map for you. SCO, you could write Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Underline that first one. Eight members, eight members. Dash. Dash. You write this. China. first four write the first four write the first four china india russia pakistan next kazakhstan kazakhstan k a z a k h s t a n kazakhstan comma kazakhstan comma hmm tajikistan T A J I K I S T A N Tajikistan, 
Come on. Uzbekistan. It's there in the question. Uzbekistan. And Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. K Y R G Y Z S T A N. Kyrgyzstan. Okay. Kyrgyzstan. Eight members. Next. Iran. Iran. will become a member only in 2023 only in only after 20 only after april 2023 only after april 2023 see in august 2021 iran signed a deal to become a full member of sco while the deal has been signed, a lot of formality has to be completed. A lot of formalities have to be completed. This effectively means that it will not become a member of the SCO till April 2023. Next, at the recent, the latest Uzbekistan, uh, latest, uh, you know, SCO meet in Uzbekistan, another country called Belarus, you could write this, Belarus, Membership has started. Membership accession. Membership accession. ACC ESS ION accession. Belarus membership accession started in September 2022. September 2022 at the SCO meet in Uzbekistan at the SCO meet in Uzbekistan so it will become 10 by the end of 2023 okay next write this um, I think you don't really need this but anyway right Observers, observers, dash, Mongolia, see this here, light green, Mongolia, Afghanistan, Mongolia, Afghanistan, and, and, what is this, Belarus, and Belarus, Belarus. Belarus anyway become make a member so next in this yellow you see this yellow here these are all dialogue partners right dialogue partners dialogue partners dialogue partners dash Egypt E G Y P T Egypt comma Turkey T U R K I Y E Turkey and Turkey comma Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia comma you see this here Qatar Q A T A R Qatar Q A T A R Qatar comma Nepal Nepal Come on. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. And Cambodia. And Cambodia. C A M B O D I A. Cambodia. Cambodia. That's all from me, my friends, and um, apologies. Uh, at times, my eyes must have blinked uh, hard, or they might have remained static because my head's bursting. It happens, you know, the body sometimes does not respond well. Have a lot of fun. Have a lot of fun this weekend and every day of your life. Please make sure you learn. Stay curious. 
push yourself very hard in life thank you for being here thank you so much my friends